Holy crap, Mulvad VPN and the Tor Project have teamed up to offer the Mulvad browser, seemingly out of nowhere. Seriously, that came totally out of nowhere, at least for me. I didn't hear anything about this until it dropped. But anyways, I've been using it for the last few days, and even though it's only been a couple of days, I thought I would go ahead and share my thoughts in this video. I'm gonna keep this video short, or at least try to, but I do wanna remind you guys that the new oil is community supported. So if you like this video and you like me being able to put videos out this fast in response to things, then every little contribution helps. We have a merch store, we accept straight up donations with fiat currency and cryptocurrency, and we have affiliate links. I've actually added a couple of them. And then of course, there's always liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, all those things are extremely helpful to spreading the word. Every little bit helps. Thank you guys so much. So for those who have missed the memo, let's go ahead and start at the beginning. Let's start with the Tor project. They are the team behind the Tor browser, which is basically the best way to be anonymous on the internet. It is based on Firefox, but they have done a ton of changes to it. Now, the way that Tor protects your privacy and anonymity actually has two parts. One of them is the Onion Router, Tor, and that is where they bounce your traffic through different nodes, and that makes it harder to follow. It obscures some of the metadata, things like that. I have a whole video about Tor and the Tor browser and how all that works, so go ahead and check that out. The other way is the actual browser itself, and they accomplish this by trying to make every browser look the same. That's why when you use the Tor browser, it is advised that you do not install any sort of extensions. Every extension you add makes you more unique and makes you stand out. You shouldn't really make any changes other than what you find in the settings menu. Now, real quick, let's talk about Molvad. Molvad is a VPN company, and I know I haven't done a VPN video yet. That is in the works. It is coming very, very soon. Please just stand by for that. Molvad is based out of Sweden, which is a company with very strong VPN protections. They actually have a whole page on their website laying out those various protections. They have a great reputation in the privacy community, and they are always forward thinking. They already have certain VPN tunnels that are using quantum computing resistant encryption. They have certain servers that run entirely on RAM. So if anybody tries to seize the servers, they can't really because they'd have to turn the server off and then the RAM would get wiped. And recently they did things like getting rid of their subscriptions and they've stopped offering refunds for cryptocurrency only for cryptocurrency so that they can keep less user data. They're always trying to think of new ways to look out for their users like that. That's one thing I really admire about them. So on that note, what is the Mulvad browser? Well, it's a browser. And it honestly, it's literally just the Tor browser without Tor. And that's not me like putting them down. They say that on their website. The goal is the same as the Tor browser. It's to give everyone the same fingerprints so that everybody looks the same and it becomes harder to track users on the internet. Now, one nice thing about this browser is that even though it's from Mulvad, it is designed to be used with any VPN. And they say that over and over again. You can use it with Mulvad and there are advantages to that, but there's nothing to stop you from using it with another VPN provider and still getting great protection. And for those of you out there who are like, I don't see the use case for this. Why would I want this? The answer is that a lot of websites block Tor, like banks block Tor. Just general, like I've noticed a lot of health websites block Tor for some reason. If you're using Tor and you're trying to use it just for any number of reasons, a lot of websites will block it. So there are plenty of valid reasons you would want to use a VPN instead, especially if you live here in America where ISPs can and do sell your browsing habits to advertisers. Yes, a VPN is a transfer of trust. That's totally valid. But in my opinion, Mulvad is a trustworthy company. So is iVPN, so is Proton. You may not agree, there's a lot of options out there. The point is there is a use case here. So ever since they announced it a couple of days ago, it is Wednesday as I'm recording this video, they announced it on Monday, I downloaded it Monday night and I've been trying it out ever since. Here are my initial impressions. Number one, the browser is free to download and use, which is awesome. Like I said, it's supposed to be VPN agnostic. You can use it with any VPN provider you want. It comes with two extensions by default. One of them is uBlock Origin, which I am a huge fan of and I encourage using on my website. The other is the Mulvad extension, which I'm gonna be honest, the Mulvad extension, I've never really been a big fan of from the beginning. If you are a Mulvad user, then it does have advantages. For example, you can send each tab through a different server, which is pretty neat. Quick correction here. You can't send each tab through a different server, but you can send the whole browser through a different server than your device. So say for example, I'm here in the US and I'm on a US server, but for some reason I want to go through a server in the UK or something like that. Then using the Mulvad extension, I can select just the browser and send that browser through a completely different tunnel. Kind of like split tunneling. I'm not really sure what I was thinking of there, but definitely was not thinking of Mulvad. But if you're not a Mulvad user, basically all it does is just reminds you to do things that this browser is already doing for you, like install uBlock Origin and change certain settings. So there's not really much to be gained there. I don't know, that was kind of a weird choice, but whatever. 
As far as uBlock Origin goes, it is stock, except for two changes. They've enabled two block lists that are not enabled by default. One of them is AdGuard URL tracking protection, which removes tracking links. And the other one is easy list cookie, which removes those annoying cookie consent banners. And for those wondering, I am told from someone that I trust that if you ignore the cookie consent banner, they are supposed to treat that legally the same as declining it. So in theory, there should be no harm in simply hiding those things. And it makes your internet experience much more pleasant. Other than that, it's stock, which is good. Cause again, you're trying to make everybody look the same. So you want to block the same things as everyone else too. The browser comes with several features that may be familiar to Tor users. For example, there's that little shield where you can quickly change between safe, safer, and safest. And depending on which one you pick, certain features will be disabled for additional cybersecurity. There is a new identity button. In Tor, this will actually rebuild your circuit and give you a whole new Tor circuit. On this, really all it does is reboot the browser and clears all the cache data. Something that I am surprised they did not talk about is that they have included their own search engine. It's called Leta or Leta, L-E-T-A. Now, to be honest, this is not a huge deal, but I'm still surprised they didn't mention this because it seems like something worth mentioning. Lita is a meta search engine using Google. So in other words, you're still getting Google's results, but you're proxying it through Molvat. Some people really like Google's results and feel that Google has the best results, but they're looking for more private ways to use Google. There are search engines already out there like Google. There is Start Page, who I'm personally not a fan of, and I've talked about that on my website. Now we have a new option, which is Lita. To be fair, Lita requires a Molvat account. So unfortunately, if you are not a paying user, you can still use the browser, but you cannot use Lita. If you are a paying user, this is how Molvad pays for use of Google's API because they got to get that money from somewhere, right? So they're using Molvad accounts to subsidize that expense. If you are a Molvad user, then hey, this is an extra perk you now get with your account, which is pretty neat. I think it's worth noting that because of the fact that you are signing in, in theory, this could create a point of tracking. However, given Molbad's reputation, I think that's extremely unlikely. And I'm not surprised that I haven't really seen anybody talking about that because again, they have a good reputation and it would be surprising if they were doing that. Overall, like I said, I've been using the browser myself for the last couple of days and there have been a few small functionality breaks like scheduling posts is a little weird because of the time zone, which I'll talk about in a second. I also have to copy and paste all my links, which again, I'm gonna talk about. But other than that, it's pretty neat. It's been pretty functional. It's been pretty smooth. And the fact that it comes built in with uBlock, in my opinion, actually makes it a little bit better than Tor. So I have noticed three big downsides so far. Number one is that you cannot make it your default browser at this time. I don't know if that will ever become a thing actually, because apparently that is part of a security implementation from Tor. The Tor browser is so heavily isolated from the system that you can't really meaningfully make it your default browser. And since this is just Tor browser with the Tor removed, the same thing applies to the Molvad browser. This is what I was talking about when I said I had to copy and paste all my links. If you are using this thing on Linux, your experience will be even worse because rather than offering it as an app image, for some reason they have offered it as, as a whole folder. So you have to go in there and find the script to start running the browser, which I guess you could like bookmark to make it a little quicker to open, but still, yeah, I, I don't know why they chose to go that route. That's really weird. Also from a fingerprinting perspective, the Molvad browser does not have a lot of users yet. I mean, it's two days old and I'm already seeing a lot of people debating it and skepticism, but this is kind of a network effect. You know, we see this a lot with social media. People will try to launch a new social media app and nobody goes there because nobody they know is there and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where nobody uses it. And unfortunately, I'm kind of already seeing this in the community where everybody's like, well, nobody's using it, so I'll look unique, so I'm not gonna use it. And unfortunately, we need some people to start using it to get that effect. Assuming it's right for you, which let's actually talk about right now, because that is the first question that everybody had that I started seeing is, how does this compare to Brave or LibreWolf or the Tor browser or whatever other browsers that are recommended? Well, as far as how it compares to the Tor browser, like I said, Tor browser actually has the Tor network. And for the record, I think the Tor browser should always be your first choice when browsing the internet. It is a little slow, but it offers the strongest privacy and anonymity benefits out there. It should be your first choice. That said, sometimes, as I noted, you can't use Tor. Either the website you wanna use is blocked or Tor has really come a long way in terms of speed, but every once in a while it is still like unusably slow. So if you can't use Tor for whatever reason, that's when you should use your other browser. Now compared to LibreWolf, and for those who are just joining us, LibreWolf is a pre-hardened version of Firefox with all the telemetry removed. So it's Firefox, but somebody took it, pulled out all of the uh, analytics and stuff that sends usage data back to Mozilla, and then added a few hardening features and put it out there. It's a great browser, I recommend it. It does have a few drawbacks, mainly the lack of auto updates. I know all of that on my website for the record. Both of them include uBlock Origin, but of course LibreWolf does not include the Mulvat extension. Both of them use the resist 
fingerprinting configuration, which changes a bunch of settings in an effort to make everyone look the same. Again, there's that whole making everybody look the same anti-fingerprinting technique. These include settings like changing your time zone to UTC, hiding certain fonts, spoofing your window size and browser version, etc. There's a whole list on Mozilla's website, which I will include in the show notes. Auto updating is probably the biggest thing. From what I understand, Mulvad browser should auto update. LibreWolf does not auto update, except on Linux. It pulls from the repos and auto updates with everything else, but on Mac and Windows, you will have to handle that separately. I talk about that on my website as well. Mulvad includes letterboxing by default, whereas LibreWolf recommends it, but does not enable it by default. Mulvad does include WebGL, LibreWolf does not. Hey guys, Future Nate here. So you just heard me use the term WebGL, and what I meant to say was WebRTC. And unfortunately, my brain was on autopilot, and I said WebGL a whole bunch of times, but just pretend I said WebRTC, because that's actually what I was talking about. Sorry about that. It was late when I recorded this video. There are some mild privacy concerns with WebGL. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think Tor would include WebGL if it was that big of a risk, but it is a small risk, which is why LibreWolf pulls it out. Depending on your lifestyle, you may not be able to live without WebGL. I'm pretty sure you need it for like, video conferencing, for example, for other people, eh, may not be a big deal. It's, it's really up to you and how you use the internet and what your use case is. Search engines, again, are one area where they differ. Mulvad's default search engine is DuckDuckGo, and they offer Lita as a backup if you are a paid user. LibreWolf, on the other hand, offers Cirex.be, or search, I don't know how that's pronounced still, and they offer DuckDuckGo as a backup. And again, on my website, I've noted I'm not really a big fan of DuckDuckGo. They've kind of lost my faith, so, yeah, but I mean, they're both Firefox based. So again, you can add whatever search engine you want. Firefox makes that super easy. You just have to right click the search engine and add it. Again, I noted that with uBlock Origin, Mulvad adds two extra lists that are not included by default. AdGuard URL tracking protection to remove tracking links and easy list cookie to remove cookie banners. LibreWolf does not make any changes to uBlock Origin on your behalf. It is totally stock. Mulvad enables DNS over HTTPS via their own Mulvad DNS resolver. LibreWolf does not do that. They do some stuff with the DNS requests in certain situations, but overall it's just regular DNS unless you change it. There is a complete list of uh, what both browsers do and you can go ahead and compare those on your own. Mulvad seems to focus very heavily on making everyone have the same fingerprint while LibreWolf focuses more on shutting up Firefox, hardening it and open sourcing it. As far as I can tell, that is the main difference between the two. Now, compared to Brave, this is kind of an apples to oranges comparison when we're talking about privacy. Brave is based on the Chromium engine, which according to some people has better security and is better able to sandbox websites. In my opinion, this is very minimal as long as people are being very careful and you know, you're not clicking random links and downloading random attachments. This is probably not gonna be a big deal for most people, but it is something worth being aware of and having in the back of your mind. Brave does have a slightly better edge on security there, but as far as privacy goes, this is why I say it's apples to oranges. Brave and Tor slash LibreWolf slash Mulvad, they have two different approaches to privacy. The Firefox browsers take a reduced fingerprint ability and make everyone look the same approach whereas Brave takes a randomization approach. When you use Brave, they randomize your fingerprint and you should, in theory, have a different fingerprint every time. With the Firefox browsers, they are trying to block as much of that fingerprint ability as possible. When websites try to get the more data about you to fingerprint you, they try to block it and send back a generic thing that makes everyone look the same. You can't really compare them. They're two different approaches. Which one is more effective? I'm gonna be honest, I have not seen any rigorous studies comparing them. I saw one blog post recently that compared Chromium with Firefox and Tor browser, but it didn't compare Brave specifically. And I know Brave has those added features. So if anyone has any actual studies on which one is better, please send them my way. Otherwise, as far as I know, it's kind of just speculation and personal preference. Okay, so final conclusion, I like it. I, I think it seems really cool. It comes from two organizations that both have great reputations. And again, I do see a use case. Tor is blocked by some people, especially people that have really no business blocking Tor. For some reason they like to, or if you're one of those people, because believe it or not, you may find this hard to believe if you're new to privacy, there are some people who insist that Tor is a honeypot and it's compromised and everybody should use a VPN. And then there's other people who say a VPN is just a transfer of trust. You're paying for it. You should use Tor instead because it's free and open source. So if you're one of those people who's suspicious about Tor and doesn't trust it, then you're gonna love this. Or if you're in a use case where again, Tor is blocked and you need to use a VPN instead, then this is a great alternative because again, it's designed to be VPN agnostic. You can use it with any VPN provider you want. 
and you still get the anti-fingerprinting benefits of everyone looking the same. Although for the record, I guess if you're suspicious of the Tor project, I'm not sure why you would trust their browser anymore necessarily. I don't know, maybe just because the browser is open source and you don't know who's running the nodes, whatever. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm just here to offer you some advice and my opinions. As far as Firefox based browsers go, LibreWolf is probably gonna be a little bit more user-friendly in my opinion, simply because you can easily make it your default browser and not have to think about it, except for updates, unless you're on Linux, in which case you really don't have to think about it because it auto updates. And to my untrained eye, it seems to me like LibreWolf has indeed put more work into hardening their browser. Again, uh, leave polite comments. Let me know if I'm wrong. I'm doing my best based on what I'm able to understand and see between the two. The Mulvad browser definitely put a lot of work into anti-fingerprinting, but it looks to me like LibreWolf put a lot of work into other areas as well that Mulvad maybe didn't put as much work into. All said, the Mulvad browser seems like a solid choice to me, and you would be helping other users along the way. You know, that's one of the reasons I encourage using the Tor browser is to help other people who actually need it. It's kind of the same thing here. Again, if Tor is not an option, this would be a great fallback if you are okay with a Firefox-based browser. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it seems like personal preference. LibreWolf is also a good choice. Brave is a different approach and has slightly better security if you'd rather stick with that route. So I say, check it out for yourself. See if you like it or not. I mean, it's a browser. It shouldn't take you more than a couple hours of trying it to see if it's a good fit, right? At the end of the day, all browsers from an end user perspective kind of do the same thing in my opinion. So really it's just up to you to check it out, see if you like the UI, see if it breaks the sites that you use, etc. Again, these are initial thoughts. So if you guys stumble on this video in like a week or a month and things have dramatically changed, please be kind. If anything major changes, I guess I'll either take this video down or put out a new one updating it. And in the meantime, if you want to help make sure that we make more videos in the future, please support us. We have affiliate links, we have a merch shop, we have straight up donations, both cryptocurrency and fiat. And then of course, if times are tough and you are unable to support financially, comments, sharing, liking, subscribing, all of those things are super helpful. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that's been helpful and good luck checking it out if you decide to do so. Have a good one and I'll see you guys next time.